And here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday, December the 10th, 2020. It's the birthday of the mathematician and inventor Ada Augusta Byron Lovelace, born in London in 1810. She was the only legitimate child of the poet Lord Byron from his marriage to Annabella Milbank. Never knew her father, who died in Greece when she was just eight years old. When she was 17, she was taken under the wing of the mathematician Charles Babbage, who had invented what he called an analytical engine, a cog-filled machine that could perform complex mathematical calculations. And it was she, Ada Lovelace, who wrote 20,000 words worth of notes on the whole project, devising a system of codes that became the first algorithm intended to be processed by a machine. So she was the first computer programmer. It was on this day, 1938, Pearl Buck received the Nobel Prize in Literature for her book, The Good Earth, came out in 1931, a book about the life of a farming family in a Chinese village. She'd spent a year in an attic in Nanjing writing the book. She was the child of missionary. She'd spent more than 40 years in China. Pearl Buck said, I grew up in a double world, the small, white, clean, Presbyterian American world of my parents and the big, loving, Mary, not-too-clean Chinese world, and there was no communication between them. When I was in the Chinese world, I was Chinese. I spoke Chinese and behaved as a Chinese and ate as the Chinese did, and I shared their thoughts and feelings. When I was in the American world, I shut the door between. And today is the birthday of Emily Dickinson, Amherst, Massachusetts, 1830, lived in her father's brick house, tending the gardens, growing all kinds of plants in the glass greenhouse that her father built for her, started writing poetry in her teens. Her mother was stricken with a mysterious illness. Emily and her sister Lavinia took care of her for several years. As she got into her 20s, she became more and more reclusive. Meanwhile, writing nearly 2,000 poems, sending them to friends or including them with gifts of baked goods. The person in the household most aware of her work was the family's Irish maid, Margaret Marr, who lived with them for 30 years, became part of the family. Emily Dickinson described the woman as good and noisy, the north wind of the family, and the two of them spent hours in the kitchen baking breads and cakes and scribbling poems on slips of paper. Dickinson left instructions for Marr to burn her poems after she died, but when she died, Margaret could not bring herself to do it, turned them over to Lavinia, who agreed with Marr that the poems should be published. Though the family did honor one of Emily Dickinson's other last requests, which was that her coffin was carried out by six Irish farm workers, including Marr's brother-in-law, carried out through the servant's door. Here's a poem by Emily Dickinson on her birthday. Some keep the Sabbath going to church. Some keep the Sabbath going to church. I keep it staying at home with a bobolink for a chorister and an orchard for a dome. Some keep the Sabbath in surplus. I just wear my wings, and instead of tolling the bell for church, our little sexton sings. God preaches a noted clergyman, and the sermon is never long. So instead of getting to heaven at last, I'm going all along. A poem by Emily Dickinson, Some Keep the Sabbath, Going to Church. That's the Writer's Almanac for Thursday, December the 10th. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. Keep in touch.